Welcome everybody to another episode of the Cornerstone Church Kingston podcast. This is a series that we're doing in the classic Christian work, The Pilgrim's Progress, written by John Bunyan, and we've been going through it together, and I um, hope you've been enjoying it. We had a lovely, encouraging email from a Reformed Baptist in America, I think he's in Arkansas, sent us an email saying he'd been really enjoying it, so if you're listening... We're glad that you've been enjoying it, and uh, we hope others have been too. Um, I'm I'm here again with Pete. Hello, Rory. Hello, and uh, I'm Tom. Ben has now left us. Ben has taken up a post at a new church in Grace Church, Haywards Heath. So if you're in the Haywards Heath area, go check it out. That's where Ben is. Um, but we're carrying on in this great story, and uh, we're picking up the, the journey. Uh, where, where Christian has spied out a friend, a fellow friend or a companion uh, on the road and uh, this is about their interaction and their conversation and um, who, who wants to start with? Well, it, he, uh, he's been longing for Christian company, hasn't he, Christian? And he sees Faithful, uh, who's from his uh, hometown, um, and uh, he spies him and thinks, oh, brilliant, and he calls out to him. I mean, I, I can't remember quite how Bunyan puts it in the original, but it's something like, oh, so, so, oh. yes, like ho, ho, so, ho. And uh, Faithful doesn't, uh, is not, he's just marching on. And then he calls out again, uh, and Faithful says, I've no time to stop. I, you know, there's, there's hounds uh, at my feet. I've got, to, I've got to get to the celestial city. I'm marching on faithfully. And it's just a, it's just a lovely little um, scene, isn't it? That no one's going to distract me from, from my walk. Um, and then Christian then is inspired by Faithful's, uh, you know, commitment to head down and going. And so he speeds up. And then even overtakes Faithful. And there's that lovely, it's just a lovely little scene, really, where uh, he, he thinks to himself, oh, good, you know, I'm even better than Faithful. I'm doing better than Faithful. And, of course, uh, because he's thinking like that, he trips up and falls. And then, he, um, I think as he passes Faithful, he smiles vaingloriously yeah. <laughs> vain uh, that he's beating another, another Christian. Yeah, that yeah. was what was motivating his sudden burst of energy, that he yeah. might get the jump on another Christian. <laughs> yeah. on the road. I mean, it's so real, isn't it? And yeah. so sort of lovely, really. And, um, and, but but, but, the, but the, he can't get up. Mm. Um, and he can't get up until Faithful comes along and helps him up and then together there's this comradeship and, and that's going to grow you know as and we... that's the Lord's kindness to him because that's a deeply humbling moment for him isn't it that he that the only way for him to get right is to accept help from the one that he's been trying to compete with <laughs> yeah. you know, he's yeah. been trying to prove that he's stronger and faster than this other Christian but now he the only way is to accept his help you know and mm. uh yeah. yeah, it is a lovely, it's a lovely little brotherhood scene, isn't it? Of, of you know, uh, sort of love for each other, really. In the end, and uh, uh, and how silly we can be, and it's that sort of stuff. John records, isn't it? You yeah. know, at the end of the gospel, he he puts in little things like that. That the disciple, the yeah. disciple saw it first, ran and got there first. <laughs> yeah. The disciple, he went in first, and yeah. so he's captured something of the. Yeah. The friendly rivalry that existed between the disciples. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so then uh, this large conversation starts, and it's quite a, it's quite a long conversation about all kinds of things and what's happened in the past, and uh, Christian sort of says things about what happened with him. But we find out quite a lot about um, about uh, about faithful and the people that he's met. But we go right back because Christian. I mean, this is a good thing, isn't it? So Christian really wants to know his testimony. Now, I wonder whether we do enough of this sort of stuff. Because when you're telling your testimony, you're sort of rehearsing the truth, aren't you? And you're, you're putting the truth back into your life. You're, you're seeing the goodness of God and how he worked in your life and the providences of God that worked to bring you as a Christian. So talking to each other about our Christian faith, that, that experience... I, mean, I know, um, you, know uh, you know, certainly the Methodists, uh, when they first started, that were into... Um, the, they used to have this thing called the experience meeting, and it, it sounds, you know, that it could be dodgy, but I don't think it is. And it, it's where they would be in their sort of um, kitchens and 
uh, small rooms that they would meet in and they would share each other's testimony they would share how god had uh, saved them and rescued them and and the providences of god and that's the sort of thing that's going on here in the walk and it's very encouraging isn't it because it's sealing those truths up on sunday morning we were looking at hebrews 11 um and uh, one of the things that uh, you were showing us there, Pete, is that, that everyone's faith story is slightly different. Um, so some people conquer yeah. kingdoms, some are conquered by kingdoms, some are involved in administering justice, some have to accept travesties of justice, mm. and yet there are things that they all have to trust in, in the great God. And that's mm. what you see with Christians. There are things that they both experience. You know, they've understood they were both hell that their city was going to be destroyed that they needed to escape they've both gone through difficulties and yet have triumphed by god's grace um, but the, the the kind of the the stories and the things they've experienced are different within that and it, it's just you know it's important to share share that it's also something quite heartwarming for christian isn't it because why is faithful left the city of destruction well mm. actually he saw christian go first didn't he mm. And I think although many in the city of destruction, although they talk about it um, long after, until they, st- until they stop, um, they stay. But faithful sees that and goes, actually, I could see that this is going nowhere as well. And it inspired me, and it well, not inspired me, but it showed me that I needed to get out of the city of destruction as well. Mm. And so that is why he... he so he's followed the example, or he's followed... Uh, the journey of Christian, and actually, that 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 must be the testimony of many people. You you see, uh, as, but particularly with younger people, they look up and they see an older person walking, maybe just close to their age, and they see that they've become a Christian and they're going for Jesus, and they go, oh, "Yeah, I think I, I want that as well." So, hmm. um, but even on the even on the sort of negative side to that, the whole town is speaking about yeah. about him, even though they're not. But, but but there's a worry, isn't there? Yeah. And and God is using it as a warning because it's it, it, um, faithful. Says the whole town when you left is is talking about its destruction. Yeah. Um. And then and then a Christian says, well, why didn't they do anything about it? And he said, well, they didn't really believe it. Mm. And I mean, w- when I read that, I just thought that 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 was the COVID time, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, the whole this this thing had come, and it was just. We would never had anything like this, um, mm. uh, quite like this, in the sense that the whole world was locked down. I mean, you had the uh, Spanish flu, yeah. um, but uh, and and people were talking, weren't they? But you know, who's run from the city of destruction from that? You know, not that many have come to Christ, have they? Even though there's the warning there. Mm. Mm. And so they talk then, don't they, about um, their conversation moves to to Pliable. Yeah. Um, now, Pliable, I think it would have been perhaps in our first session or, or our second session we, we talked about. So there were two people when Christian first left the city of destruction. One was called Obstinate, the other was called Pliable. And Obstinate never really left. He was very stubborn and, and refused to go. But Pliable did and went with him for a while. And then when they fell into the slough of despond, um, Pliable decided that all this talk of heaven and the glories of the celestial city was clearly nonsense. And if this was what it was, then he wasn't going to have it. And so he left the South Despond and went back, clothed and caped in mud hmm. to the city of destruction, whereas Christian forged on. Um, and so they have a little discussion, don't they, about what happened with Pliable. Hmm. What, what are the things to draw out from that discussion? Well, interesting with, with Pliable is that although Christian is ridiculed, Pliable is seen in the worst light, isn't he? Mm. Because he didn't stay faithful to his profession. And uh, because he can't uh, hold to his convictions, I think people see him as an as a object of ridicule. Um, and so, he, you know, uh, Bunyan says he is seven times worse off now than if he had never left the city in the first place. Mm. Um, and, and, and actually, I think he, Pliable feels that because when, when Faithful walks past him, he, he makes sure not to avoid, to avoid him just before he leaves the city. So he's obviously ashamed as well of how he's acted. He knows he's probably done something wrong. He knows he's um, been a, a, well, they say a turncoat. Yeah. Mm. 
Um, and so there's a lot of shame for pliable butts, not enough shame to drive them back to leaving the city of destruction. Mm. And he is in a much worse position now because the, the, the hardened residents of the city of destruction who've never explored the roads of the Celestial City, um, well, they're in, a back, they're in a dangerous place, but he's more so because he can now say, oh yeah, I've tried it. Mm. I, know, I know what it's like, it's not as good as it's cracked up to be. And there's a, there's a level of hardness Mm. that his heart has now experienced mm. because of that. He, he can't, he's not ignorant anymore, mm. you see. He's tried it and he's turned back. So he, 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 it's going to be even harder for him to come to repentance now. Mm. Um, and that's a very clear warning, isn't it, mm. that comes through the scriptures, yeah. the book of Hebrews particularly. For those who've had or sampled something of the gospel road and known their conscience to come awake even a little bit, mm. if they then suppress and go back, um, it's, it's, it's really impossible for them to come to repentance because yeah. they've already tasted and they think they know, you see, so that, that's the problem. Um, and you're right, the, the, the residents of the City of Destruction won't have him because he's, you know, he's got his right foot in and his left foot out or whatever, he, mm. he doesn't belong in any world anymore. He's left them saying, yeah, actually I don't fancy you guys. But now he's had to come back and they won't accept him anymore because, you know, so he's, he's a very pitiable yeah. character. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know quite where the term turncoat comes from, but I, I guess it's so, so an um, army or, thing, yeah, is it? Army, yeah, You're putting on the opposite coat, change, change yeah. colours, yeah. yeah. But then it goes even worse, doesn't it? Because he quotes the scriptures and says yeah. this is a dog to his own vomit. He's, he's returned to the, to the vomit. Mm. And... Um, I mean, it is shocking. I, I think, I think, obviously, as sort of Christians that have walked the way, we have seen people do this. And I think when you first see this as a as a young Christian, it's one of the most shocking things, isn't it? That you you have um, you know someone that was walking with you for a little bit, and they've returned to their own vomit, and you you just see what they're doing and. They think they're happy as they're licking up their own sins, or their old sins, and they're mocking, uh, mocking you. And it's very hard sometimes to, uh, certainly when you first see that, but it does happen, you know. Yeah. On a, yeah. Well, it causes both Christian and faithful great sadness. Yeah, I mean, Christian is interested in him, isn't yes. he? You know, he's, he asks about him, so he's concerned for him, yeah. yeah. And he said, I had great hope for him. Yeah. And, yeah. And I think... It, it fills them both with sadness that they they, mm. they they want to move on from this subject because they realise that pliable is he sort of had it, hasn't he's he? Had it, mm. and so they want to. Yeah, they feel it, and then they have they have to move on. They want to encourage and warm their souls. I think. So then, uh, Christian says, "Anybody else did you meet?" Mm. And uh, and then um, uh, Faithful says, uh, one. Mm -hmm. "This is a great one, isn't it?" And was that? That was that the Slough of Despond as well? Was no, it? that's uh, isn't that at the gate? So Faith, Faithful um, escapes the Slough of Despond. He doesn't well. really go through yeah. it, does he? So he, yeah. he says, "I understood you fell into it," and then he gets to the gate without suffering. Then he meets a woman. Named Just at the Wanton. gate, yeah. yeah. There's a woman called Wanton. And she's trying to do him harm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he's the sort of um, lustful uh, woman of proverbs isn't she really i think he probably quotes qu quite a lot of proverbs here doesn't he bunyan and she's flashing her eyes and saying come down this road don't go through that i can offer you luxuries and beauties and and faithful's tempted yeah it's interesting isn't it there's, there's probably not you know it's probably reading too much into it but it, it's interesting how you know christians temptations have so far been along the lines of legalism, haven't they? That, that he's quite drawn to, mm. you know, goodwill and, or, or, no, he's good, isn't he? But morality and civility and, and trying to get rid of his burden through law, he quite likes that idea. But you wonder where faithful is more, is more drawn to those sorts of temptations, you know, sexual sin and the desires of the flesh, so to speak, because that comes up a bit later on, doesn't it? Uh, mm. We'll see. And I, they, they may not be, that may not be a... No, I mean, Christian is married, isn't it's he? It's definitely sort of true, isn't it? Yeah. In, um, yeah. Christians have different areas that they're tempted. To yeah. Yes. Um, it's a great exchange, well, isn't it? Because because Christian's like, well, this is the this is the same woman who tempted Joseph. Yeah. Oh, I love that, yeah. Yeah, part of his wife. And uh, 
And then he says, you can't imagine how flattering her words were, says Faithful. And uh, so they go, go through this. There's this sensual pleasure on offer, carnal and fleshy nature. And I just love the few Christian lets out a low whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you escaped her, because those despised by the Lord shall fall into her pit. And he's thinking about the Proverbs of the, 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 the person who falls into the adulteress. Uh, but he's still, he, Faithful's still worried. He's like, I'm not sure I completely escaped this, this woman. Um, I think that's just fantastic mm. because he said he closed his eyes so he wouldn't actually go with her mm. and he said he didn't actually I can't remember the term that Bunyan uses but didn't actually physically go along defile myself with her he mind. didn't defile himself with her but he's, he clearly knows that you can close your eyes and not defile yourself but in your mind it, there, there's an attraction there and that in itself is a, a horror and that's going to come up i think later when he meets someone else in a minute but um yeah really really realistic isn't it yeah uh you know you you say no to that you close your eyes you turn your back on it but yes. your mind is lurking uh, you know with what could have happened and, and also reminds us that temptation comes back doesn't it? i think that's kind of what you're saying tom um just because you win the battle once doesn't mean the battle won't come back again. Yeah. It feels like he's going to sort of struggle with this in an ongoing fashion, um, that, that this may come back to try and tempt him again. Um, so so it, that's a very real, like we said, we've, we all have our kind of habits and struggles and sins that we kind of go for. Um, and I think this is the one for, for faithful, and as you say, maybe more legalism for for Christian. Mm. And she, I mean, her offers are really wonderful, aren't they? It's the same in Proverbs. You know, the sheets are clean. Uh, you know, husbands aren't around. You'll be perfectly all right. You know, I've done um, my offerings. As I've religious. done my. This, she pretends to be a Christian, doesn't she? There's religious stuff there. Come on, you know, it's all very nice. Um, yeah. He resists her. So who's the next one? Um. So the next one is probably the. Yeah, I mean, after pliable, it's probably the longest, isn't it? And this is where um, both Christian, and we looked at this in a whole episode, and Faithful have had to go up this difficult hill, hill difficulty, and that's the place where Christian rested for too long and fell asleep and lost the scroll of his assurance, and there were the lions uh, on the road, and then the palace beautiful at the top, and they've seen these things, both of them have seen these things, but have had slightly different experiences. And uh, Faithful, when it was his turn to climb uphill difficulty, he met this aged man at the bottom um, who begins to begins to talk to him, doesn't he? Um, I can't remember asked how it him, now, asked him the classic question, who are you, where are you going? Yeah. No, but he, not only, it says he beats him with word and blows. He starts beating him, doesn't he? Isn't that... Does, does, does Adam? No. Adam, Is that, Adam, have I got? Have I got Moses? Have well, I? I think that's, that's later on. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. 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 Um, I mean, it's part of the same thing, really. But um, so Adam, the first begin. The first bit I can remember, I haven't got it in front of me, is when he, yes, as you say, so he asks him for his story. Yeah. And then does he say, I've, I, look, you, you, might, you might like to hear my offer. I've got three ladies uh, who you It's can... interesting, he says, he sort of starts with, you, you look like an honest, an honest bloke, essentially. Would you want to come and live with me and I'll pay you? So you're an honest bloke, but actually he lives in a town called Deceit. This is Adam the First. Right. So he says, I'll give you a, a, an honest wager thing, but actually it's, a dece- it's all deceitful. It's, <laughs> it's the delight of wages. It's so, so funny. And then he says, he told me that uh, his work offered many delights and that his wages would make me a full heir in his family. And so then, then it comes apparent that there's these three, these three that, children. His three children, yeah. Mm. What is it? Lust of the flesh? Yeah, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes and the pride of life. <laughs> so this is an invitation, isn't it, for Faithful... Um, to come with this man mm. and, uh, into the town of deceit and to enjoy the life and the pleasures that he can. And who is this offer. man? Well, this person is called, he's called, I don't know. He's called his name is Adam the First. But he's called it Adam is, the First. It is revealed, yeah. 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 Um, but is it, so what is this then? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Well, this, this, is, this, is our, this is what you would call our, our nature. Our old first nature. nature. Our yeah. old nature. So um, Adam the First, you know, you've got this theology in the Bible that um, there are really two men. There's the first Adam and the second Adam, and they stand as the representatives for all of humanity. Um, that in Adam, everyone... 
fell, yeah. um, and everyone born after the fall in Genesis 3 has inherited this corrupt, fallen nature, um, so that although we weren't literally there in the garden, mm. um, we have inherited that nature and do what Adam and Eve did by choice as a result of that. You know, It's not that we sin and become sinners, mm. we are sinners and therefore we sin. That's what we inherit from him. But then Christ comes as the second Adam, yeah. resisting temptation, living the perfect life, and through faith we can have our headship uh, in him. We find a new representative. Mm. And so Adam the first, it really it stands for our nature apart from the saving work of Christ. This, this is who we are and this is what we do, isn't it? Um, and and so, so, so that... He's, He's, a, he's, he's appealing, this is faithful, you know, Adam the first, you know, although, although faithful has left him behind, he's not in heaven yet, mm. and so he's not outside of the reach of the old nature just yet. Mm. So here is Adam the first, and it's like, come on, faithful. So even, even, even though, sorry, even though you can leave the city of destruction, because in many ways it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you, you, wherever you go, you take Adam the first with you, yeah. even though you've got Christ as your head, yeah. there's Adam the first there. And, it, and it's Adam the first who sparks up his ears and sparks up his desires when wanton comes comes to him. So wanton may be outside of you, but Adam the first is a response to wanton, isn't it? Uh, and, you know, you suddenly think, oh, she, she is actually very nice, and yeah, I yeah. want to go, go there. So that's the battle, isn't it? That's the battle, yeah. yeah. That's what Paul talks about in the New Testament, yeah. where he says, you know, I want things that I hate mm. you know there's this mystery in me so like, how is this still possible that I, I, I'm still drawn towards the things that I know are wrong and harmful and that's because although he's you know been dealt a death blow mm. we still have to contend with the old nature for now and, and, and these three daughters it's I mean Bunyan's quote in 1 John 2 the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life that's mm. the world yeah and so to be under Adam is to be of the world and so that's that's and that's Adam's offer. He, he says to Faithful, you can marry these three. Uh, and so Faithful's like, well, how long do you expect me to to live with you as, mm. uh, to get these these women, these daughters of yours? And he says, as long as he lived himself. Mm. So that's, you, that's all you can be promised, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, live for the world now. Until the world's gone, you'll have these three things. Mm. Um, so that's which which, which is actually, um, you know part of the wages he's offering because the wages of sin is death yes. <laughs> I mean he doesn't say that but that's what's going to happen isn't yeah. it but I think that this is a really important thing isn't it because as Christians we feel we've left the world of destruction and we, we, we're, we're walking this road but suddenly we're faced with this internal battle it's not just external battles is it but the external appeals to the internal and uh, and that can be that's hard, isn't it, as a young Christian to sort of get that? Well, it's hard as a, any age Christian, isn't it? But it, it's if you don't understand that, you can easily fall in this area. I think. Um, the, yeah, go on. Sorry, no, carry on. No, I've done. Well, I just think it's an amazing, it's an amazing change again. I just think Bunyan's so masterful at these sort of things because. Uh, as you say, there's that that pull, it, that desire to do it, but then he looks closely at this man and, and on his forehead, forehead is so good. put off the old man, yes. isn't it? And so he's got. This, then he's like, "No, I can't go with this man. I, I know that he will sell me as a slave. I know that if I go down this line, I will be enslaved to sin, and, and then obviously, as you say, the wages of sin is death." So he tries to go, and as he goes, there's the pull. There's this pull. Well, it's a scorn at first. It's like, "You, what are you doing?" And then as he, he leaves, he pulls him back he jerks yeah. him back and that's kind of what you're talking about tom it's this roman seven a oh, wretched man that i am who will set me free from the of death. it's always this pull it always as you try and live for jesus it's always the pull of the world and it's interesting like you see this with people i mean you see it with yourself but if you if you're ever involved in ministry Particularly, I think with youth, uh, I found this doing youth. You have certain individuals that are kind of wanting to live for Jesus. And they've got like an arm being pulled by Jesus this way, but they've got an arm the other side pulling them. That's the world and all the desires of this world and and, and the things that they have. And that is the the that is the sort of nature of being a Christian in this world. 
Um, you want to go and live for Jesus and go towards the celestial city, but yet this world is always there and this flesh is always there with you pulling you back, saying, look at this, look at this. Mm. Mm. And then, so and then he, the next one. He resists yep. it, doesn't he? Feels pulled back. Yeah, feels knows pulled that back. that's going to be the battle, I guess. Yeah. Yep. And so he then gets some some way up the hill, doesn't he? Um, mm. And and then he. I don't know whether this is. I'm just inserting. Well, then he meets he another bloke. The sort of footprints right. racing up behind him. <laughs> yeah. And then he he gets clobbered. This is he's clobbered. absolutely he's clobbered. Away from Christian at first, isn't it? Because last time he, a man came up he behind him, he got yeah, smacked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, um, with word and blow, yeah. it says I like that. So yeah. he, he he experiences a merciless beating <laughs> on the road here. There's this figure who who knocks him down <coughs> and repeatedly And he calls for mercy him and lays yeah. it to him. Yeah. Um, he calls for mercy, he says I have no mercy. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how to give mercy. <laughs> uh, and so it's this, yeah, I mean, it's like the scene outside of a bar on Saturday night, isn't it? You know, he's, he's in the fetal position, uh, curled up on the floor, and he's just being stomped on and <laughs> laid into and crying out for mercy. You know, it's pretty pretty brutal, isn't it? And then he, he requires Christian's interpretation, doesn't he? Or Christian tells him who this was, is that right? Yeah, well, I mean, it, but, you know, the, the good thing for... Uh, faithful as he gets beaten up, he's yes. about to be finished off, yes. and then someone someone steps in and, and stops him, um, and so then the beating is, is stopped, um, and then he goes, and then Christian asks, "Who's the man who stopped?" And it's lovely because he says, "At first I didn't recognise him, but as he went by, I noticed the hole in his hands and in his side. Mm. Then I concluded that he was our Lord, so I continued up the hill." And then Christian says, well, the, guy, the, the man who beat you up was Moses. Yeah. And it's the law of God, isn't it, that Moses is standing for there. Um, I mean, we'll chat about this, but, um, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's the saviour, isn't it? Uh, so, 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 what, so what Moses is beating, partly what Moses is beating um, Faithful up for was that he was inclined yes. to listen to Adam. That's right. And so I think what... I think what Bunyan's doing here is, um, and I, there's there's a lot of right here, you know, there's a lot of right here, but I think there may be some things that are not quite right. Um, uh, he's 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 showing that when you know if you break the law of God, then you are under the condemnation of God. So if you go the way of trying to be saved by the law, it will only bring condemnation on you. Um, and so. Uh, uh, a part of knowing that condemnation is the drawing that that you would be interested in wanton that you know she she's a whore mm. she's um uh, you know abhorred by god we're told she's only going to lead to death she'll give you a feast that will take you to hell you know and the 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 ridiculousness that our nature is drawn to that just for a few seconds or few minutes of pleasure or a night of pleasure um you know is just is just crazy and so the law is saying you are a madman you are a lawbreaker in your desires in your very nature and so it smashes you and what we need to see is that actually when i see my very nature when i see my very sin i turn to the one who's the savior yeah and the law also it defines our sin for us doesn't it um so so you you know you've got the tenth commandment you shall not cover you know it, it kind of it gives expression and understanding to what was going on in faithful's heart when he heard about the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and when he saw wanton he may not quite have had the language to describe what was going on in him but the law says Ah, uh, that was coveting. That's the tenth commandment. Mm. Coveting something that didn't belong to you. That was a woman that wasn't yours. Smash, smash, hit, hit. Yeah. bang. And, it, yeah. and, and then it's, it strikes you, doesn't it? No mercy what, there. What that was, yeah. You know. Yep. And you know, and the seventh commandment: you shall not commit adultery. Oh, that's what I was doing in my heart. It's, you know, it's like it's, and so that's how it's hitting you because it's labelling and defining and showing you what you are. Really, I mean, uh, which is a painful. I know, mean, but, uh, but um, the the law does bring mercy because it shows us Christ, and I, I guess that is actually Bunyan is doing this, isn't he? Because the law is beating him, but but then Christ comes along, mm. and so that's the point of. It's not that there isn't any mercy in 
Moses because Mo- Moses is pointing to Christ, isn't he? Yes. And so the very here, the mercy is in 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 Christ. It does he does turn him to Christ, yeah. doesn't it? Yes, and I think I think he's maybe Bunyan's picking up imagery from like the book book of John, for instance. You know, in Moses there was the law, but in yeah. Christ it was grace and truth. truth. Yeah. And then later on, when when Jesus is talking about how he's or he is the Son of God, essentially, he says that if you live by the law, then your judge is Moses. Mm. And so we, there is a there is an aspect of where mm. our judge is Moses if we live by the law, mm. and that's. Or we live by our own self righteousness. Or we try and be, be saved by the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that that should drive us then to Christ, I think. Yeah, Paul says it, doesn't he? Like, if you want to get right with God that way, then you have to keep every single part of yeah. it. And if you break even one part of it, you break the whole lot of it. Mm. So if you really want to go that route, that's what's required. Yes. I, I think the thing is, it's interesting though, when you read the Old Testament and. and you see that, um, that there's really no way that kind of faithful Old Testament believers thought the law was only there to beat and destroy and hammer them and that it was a horrible thing to possess because if you read something like Psalm 119 or whatever, mm. the, you know, Deli- they, they, they delight in the law. They delight they? in the mm. law because it's a revelation of the character of God and that's the sweetest thing that there is to a believer is that they can know God and they've been told what to do by God and what he loves. And so although although it was brutal in the sense that it convicted them of their sin mm. and the law always pointed beyond itself to Christ, um, I think Moses would have also p- partly been seen as a, as a bringer of something wonderful to, to the people of God. Yes. Um, which I think Bunyan would have believed. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure. I, th- I think he's doing this in the salvation yeah. aspect, isn't he? If, if you go down the route of the law, yeah. uh, that you're going to be saved. And so the law can't change you. Mm. Uh, that's the thing, isn't it? The law can't change the old Adam in you. Yeah. All, all the law can do is to show you that you've sinned, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. it's, it's like the... You know, um, well, I use this illustration quite... Uh, you know, when you go, If you go... If you go to the tunnel that goes under the Yarra, I think, or Yarrow, or something, I can't remember what it is, the river in in Melbourne, there's a tunnel that goes under the river in Melbourne in Australia. And when you go under the tunnel, there's all these signs that say, do not spit. Hmm. And you've never, you know, I I hadn't thought of spitting. Hmm. And, uh, And then you see the sign, and the sign, the rule, the law says, do not spit. And saliva starts coming in your mouth, yeah. and you look around see if there's anyone, and you spit. Yeah. And I'd never thought of spitting until the sign said. And and in one sense, the law is that it shows you're a rebel. You don't know you're a rebel until you see until yeah. you see the law, and then your heart is drawn out. You're a rebel. Mm. It can't give you mercy. It doesn't change you. It just says this is the truth, mm. whereas the gospel does. But I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm perhaps changing my mind a bit on Bunyan here because, you know, as he's being beaten, Jesus does come, doesn't he? So, yeah. Well, I think that's it. I think that's the the John uh, the John five stuff. The way he, where he says Moses is your judge to the Pharisees is mm. those who are living by the law. Yeah. So Moses will judge you. Yes. Moses will judge you because you haven't kept the law. Yeah. But Moses will judge you because you haven't listened to him. And you haven't listened to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Because because Moses is given the prophecy that there will be one like you, a prophet that you need to listen to. Yes. And that's Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think those. That's why he'll beat you because you haven't listened to his. <laughs> about Jesus yeah. and you haven't listened to the so you've tried to live by the law and therefore you're under condemnation hmm. well there's some of the people he met he, he's going to um, the, con- the conversation carries on and mm. and then together they meet another man yeah. I think that will be next next time yeah, yeah. it's just uh, interesting when he gets to the top of the hill he you know faithful finds that the lions were asleep hmm? yeah you know, so that's something he didn't have to uh, yeah the same yeah. way because it was noon when he yeah. got there yeah and the lions were sleeping and, and so he because it was earlier in the day he passed straight beyond well, it wasn't an issue before, didn't he yeah as well so just different different ways the Lord is leading them but um yeah, well, do do um, if you've missed any of the episodes, I know we've we've referred to things uh, and scenes from previous episodes, so uh, you might you might find it useful to catch up on the ones we've done, and um, do keep tuning in for more episodes. And cornerstonechurchkingston.org, you can find all kinds of other sermons, resources, articles. Um, but thanks for listening.